Today we're heading over to rehearsal, and this room is going to be packed with talent, big talent such as Billy Gibbons, Don Felder, Stephen Stills, Robbie Krieger of the Doors. Come on in. Hey man, this place is packed with some of the most legendary musicians in the business. I've sat down and played with many of these people before, but today we're here to talk to Mr. Robbie Krieger of The Doors. But first, let's rock and roll, baby. Let's get a little Roadhouse Blues. time he was one of my favorite bands in history of all time one of my favorite singers was sing for this man here mr robbie krieger so robbie that was kind of fun out there doing yeah, that that was pretty That's one cool of my favorite door yeah, song roadhouse blues yeah you guys are like a, a a psychedelic blues band more than a lot of the bands from that era you guys are more blues than i think people think well yeah because you know ray was from chicago so he grew do up, it. Uh, yeah i mean he did you know he saw muddy waters all the time and and Howlin' Wolf, all those guys. So, uh, and, and I love blues too, me and John. Uh, we, uh, we grew up uh, listening to all that stuff. When I got into the band, I said, oh, these guys, are, they're, they're playing blues riffs up there. Well, you know? yeah, I mean, like, you know, Backdoor Man. Um, <laughs> yeah. uh, you know where I got the idea for that? Was I heard uh, John Hammond Jr. Do it. You know who he is? Yeah, yeah, doing John a version Hammond, of it. He did, he did Backdoor Man, kind of like we do it. He's uh, really a great uh, blues guy. He, if you ever heard him do uh, uh, Robert Johnson, he's like the best Robert Johnson. Uh, uh, Robert Johnson with some weird timing and story. I know, but this, this guy best, does it, yeah. man. He does it, he does it. Well, I like to way you start that song with that, gun, 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 gun. Yeah, well, that's how he did it. That's how he did it. It was totally yeah. different. I didn't know that's Totally you different than Howlin' Wolf. Oh, yeah. Your sound is always really identifiable, like more than your style. Your sound to me, huh. uh, and when I heard it just then, you just have this. It sounds like a front pickup, three thirty-five or something to me in That's my head. Right. Yeah, I always use the front pickup. Yeah, and and, and I always used uh, Fender Twins in the studio. Yeah, you like that clean sound, that uh, yeah. really clean sound. I don't know why I just didn't use those on the road. I wish I had. So who were you listening to back in those days? Um, rock and roll wise, or just music. Yeah, what, what was your um, well, you know, I, I played flamenco. That was what I was into before I played electric. So, you know, I listened to Savikas and uh, Segovia. Damn, That's hold like, easy, folks. Wait, we're going to edit that out. <laughs> this is a rock and roll road trip, Robert. This is not a flamenco road trip. Right. We're going to change it. <laughs> it can make me change the name of the show. <laughs> <laughs> That's hard shit to play, man. So you got yeah, you got a I mean, good right I, hand yeah, thing. Yeah, taking lessons and doing all that. And then one day I saw Chuck Berry play <laughs> at the uh, Santa Monica Civic. It, it was billed as a blues uh, uh, blues show, and so they had Big Mama Thornton and the Chambers Brothers, oh, man. Who, who were blues back then in the early '60s. Before time, they were just blues. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they were really good blues band. Before they took acid. It, maybe, yeah. <laughs> maybe. So I saw that show, and the next day I went and bought an electric guitar. I said, I'm going to get one like Chuck Berry has since Red. That's all I knew, it was Red.
give up your vow. What about you guys with the Doors in the early days? I've, I've read every you know book on you guys that I could always get my hands on. But well, always... I'm writing one finally. So. Well, then I'll get the real real story because they do vary a little bit. But um, you know, having a crazy guy like Jim, they always get in trouble and causing trouble. I I read somewhere that you guys had only done less than 40 shows after you made it, and before you. Like really? you didn't did play that many shows or something. Maybe it was one tour you only got 40 shows in. I do 40 shows a week <laughs> <laughs> in my heyday. Well, I think we did more than that. But we, you're right, we didn't play that much because it was mostly weekends. You know, because Jim would just be too much after a few days, man. We, we couldn't, uh, you know how a tour is, man. Yeah. It would just give him an Freedom. excuse to go really crazy. But luckily, because we didn't, play that many shows we, we got to record a lot we had plenty of time to record so we did you know six albums in four years oh yeah the, back in those days that's that's kind of what a lot of people did but not when once you had a big record a lot of times you went out and capitalized for as long as you could yeah yeah we did a couple of good sized tours but mostly it was weekends you know we'd go there wow yeah that's kind of what i do now yeah me too <laughs> <laughs> now when you guys were writing what was the the, you, you wrote a lot of songs with the band. I mean, so were you, were you writing to Jim's lyrics like Elton and, and it was all and different. Barney, you, all, different? all different ways, yeah. you know. Um, uh, I I wrote you know some songs totally myself, and the, and the, you know Jim can not play anything, so he him and Ray came up with a, a lot of those early ones. But did Jim uh, present lyrics? He was like a poet. Yeah, yeah. He, and, he and would. Well, he he actually could hear the song in his head. Oh. Yeah, he, he said he used to take this really good Acapulco gold and he was hanging out on this guy's roof and he, he heard a concert in his head and he wrote it down. He knew, he knew it, exactly how it would sound. You know, you guys yeah, so. were just, I mean, really had your finger on the pulse to me. I mean, you know, they are one of the bands that really was talking about politics. You're talking about the people in the street. You're talking about the movements that were going on in the whole drug world, you appealed so much, you guys were so fashionable. Jim used to say that when he wrote anyway, he tried to tell me to write like that, is to be a mirror of society. You yeah. Know, don't try well, to I think preach you your own, you know, what you think it should be, but just be a mirror. I got this thing called this or that, which is the most fun part of my show because you're not allowed to like say, oh well, both. You know, you gotta take a stand. You being a Capricorn, I know Capricorns can take a stand. One or the other. You ready? Okay. The 70s or the 80s? 70s. In an amplifier, a clean sound or an overdriven sound? You can't say both. Huh? <laughs> I'll say clean because you can always dirty it up with a Yeah, pimp. you gotta start. I figure you I, start. I, with I really clean. like a clean sound. Like my favorite amp of all time is this 1959 Twin Reverb. 80 watts. If I have one, I'll, I'll sell it to you. Really? I'm trying to get one from Joe. He's got about six. I never sell anything. I'm like the other guys. I, I buy all this shit, and then I don't use it. And I, and I got to say, no, I don't want to sell it. Um, Clapton or Page? Ah, uh, Clapton. Serious question to end this thing here. First of all, thank you for doing this. Yeah. I've always wanted to meet you. My son always said that he met you before. Aaron, he said, oh, yeah, my sure. Rob, you know, Robbie's really cool. You'd really dig him, Pop. So. Now I dig you. You're a good man. <laughs> All right. Very cool. I'd probably say the same thing to him. Let it roll, baby roll. Let it roll, baby roll. Let it roll. All night long. Yeah. Hey. That's rock and roll. Red Rocker Sammy Hagar here backstage at the Novo Theater. Okay, rehearsal's over. 
we're here. This is what backstage looks like here. We're about to start the interview with a guy that I respect as a singer, as a, as a guitarist, and as a purist. And that would be Mr. Joe Bonamassa. Joe. Sammy, it's an honor to be here. We Thank you very met. much. We finally met after literally 25 years of six degrees of separation. <laughs> I was in a band with your son yeah. when I was a teenager. I was in a band called Bloodline, which um, was aptly named at the time, and it was it was it was Aaron, your son, was and, a I was, singer. and I was like this 13-year-old little spoiled brat kid on the guitar. And you not only had Aaron in there, you had Miles Davis, a son, that's right, on drums. You and have Robbie Krieger, Robbie C Krieger's son, and Barry Oakley's son from the Allman Brothers. Hence I mean, Bloodline. What a great band. What, do you, what the hell do you think would have happened if you'd have stayed with that and not became Joe Bonamassa? I don't know. I mean, I was a pudgy kid with a cowboy hat. I saw you. you I can saw Google pictures that. of that band. You can Google it. <laughs> and I didn't sing. And there was a producer named Phil Ramone, the late, great Phil Ramone, yeah. um, told me when I was 13 years old, and he said, you got to sing and you got to write songs. And, and as a 13-year-old kid, I had no interest in any of that. Basically, I just wanted to be a musician in a band, and I, and I did, was doing that. I didn't realize until much later that, you know, those pesky things called songs and being able to sing gives you such, you know, such freedom as an artist to express yourself. And, and I didn't realize that until I was in you know, my early 20s. Don't you How do you think it happened? Um, was it, you know, I mean, I know hard work. I mean, you go out and you play shows a lot and you make yeah. records, you, you work, 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 work. And, um, but the whole PBS thing, I think it was real important for you, what, what you did with them. And was that your idea? We made a DVD at the Albert Hall in 2009. And I had written Eric Clapton a letter, long story short, and he was nice enough to show up and play a song at the Albert Hall. I and saw that. We put every dollar we had into this DVD. This was this was the equivalent of taking all your chips, betting it on double zero green, <laughs> spinning the wheel, and walking away going, like, well, I guess that's the end of me. How do you take care of yourself, Joe? Do you take care of yourself? You know, I, I drink too much Diet Coke, and I smoke too many cigars. Oh. Now. Oh, but, you can't sing and smoke cigars. You will be done at 60 if yeah. you keep smoking cigars, um, young man. But, but other than that, I, I, I never went through a drug phase, and I, I stopped drinking alcohol because two reasons. One, I became too good at it, and, <laughs> and two, I became three good at it. And when you're like, you're like, okay, you know, it's like anything else. I'm a guitar collector who has 800 guitars and amps. I tend to take things to an extreme, so I kind of stopped that before. How many guitars you got? I'm interrupting you now because you said that earlier. You wanted a, you said I wanted two guitars. How many you got? I have 400. Ah, something, something like that. I think it's time for this, Joe. Uh oh. Okay, so this is a this or that thing, and see what what what, what where side are you? I'm Taurus. Oh well, you can handle this. Okay. It's, it's the Pisces and the Libras and the Geminis that can't handle this. Okay. So you, you can't wish you wash on me. No, no, I'm, I'm, de Taurus, I'm definitive to, to a fault. Les Paul or Fender? Les Paul. I knew it. <laughs> but Leo Fender invented electricity. Oh. He's, he was the true genius. Singing or playing guitar? Oh, playing guitar. See, I told you. See how, see how smart I am, Joe? I know you. I have never met you, and I'm, and I'm got you, you down. Can, you know, the thing about... Playing guitar, I could if I had the flu, some some yeah. onset gout sets in. Anything, I can still play. The thrill is gone with some semblance of, of authenticity. Trust me, I know that. You know, when you just can't sing. It's the blues. You want to talk about the blues? Walking out there with no voice. And those gigs just keep coming and coming and coming. <laughs> You're like, oh, it's brutal. It's brutal. Uh, last one, probably the toughest one. Mm -hmm. The blues or the blues. I would say, I would say the blues, um, because there's the blues and then there's the blues on the blues. It's very easy to, pay, to play bad blues, but very difficult to play good blues. Because when you hear bad blues, it gives you the real blues, in which then it's the conduit to play the good blues. <laughs> Joe, thanks Sammy, for, thanks for having show. me. A really a pleasure to meet pleasure. you. Pleasure. Pleasure's all mine. Thanks well, for having me. There you go, Mr. Joe Bonamassa. Well, let's go up and play. We're going to play a song tonight, actually. With Robbie Creek? Yeah. yeah. Give him the twin. Boom. Give him a twin. <laughs> <laughs> One of my
my favorite door songs of all time, Robbie. Can you help me out? Oh, 